To complete a t-test on the calculator, you need to know the null hypothesis value. That's the 7,500. Here is the sample mean. Here is the sample standard deviation. And then here's the sample size here. So those are the values you have to enter into the calculator command in order to complete this t-test. So on the calculator, we'll go to stat and over to tests. So there's t-test. So you want to enter the statistics yourself. So I'll press the down arrow. The null hypothesis value is the 7,500. So the sample mean in this context is 6,899.75. So the standard deviation that we were given was 393.44. And then lastly, the sample size is n. That sample size was 50. Now it is important also to indicate the direction of the alternative hypothesis. So reading this context, the key is this, different. So we're looking for evidence that the white blood cell count is significantly different than normal. So that is a two-sided or a two-tailed alternative. So we want to choose the not equal to option. And then we can highlight calculate and we'll get our test statistic, the t-score and the p-value. So the t-score is confirmed at negative 10.788 and there is the super low p-value. So 1.5 times 10 to the negative 14th on the handout, I actually wrote it out with all the crazy decimal places. So something to think about if you are doing a t-test, it is important to document the t-score, the p-value, and also the degrees of freedom. This is a t-test for a single population mean, so the degrees of freedom are one less than the sample size. The degrees of freedom are 49.